Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Roots Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is by Morris Manning from his new book, Rail Splitter. I've read two of Morris Manning's poems to you uh, over the course of the last year or so. And uh, this next one is, is another one from, as I said, his collection, Rail Splitter, which is probably my favorite new collection of 2019. Can't recommend it highly enough. I really love this collection. and Hope you head over to Amazon and, and pick a copy up. I've been telling everyone I know to, to get a copy and spend some time with it. I think it'll be one that you go back to. And this, is a, this poem here is a good example of why. It's called The Art of Poetry. It goes like this. Everything changes. Even alone as I am in this strange eternity, my mind is restless, and yet I also live with a kind of peace. To say I also live even though I'm dead is funny. I have to humor myself down here, or up here, whatever adverb designates this realm. Let's call it the realm of the voice and the mind. And as the mind changes, so must the voice. But the voice eventually ceases to be distinct and therefore becomes itself. I don't know how that happens. It just becomes a common voice, a voice that anyone hearing it would know. Ideally, the voice will say something worth saying, or better, say something without having to say it. Poetry speaks about the unspeakable. It's a clanking wagon load of paradox pulled by a horse across a vast land in utter darkness and the voice without a body guides the horse. Nothing about this arrangement seems to bother the horse. Pulling the squeaking wagon load of paradox through the darkness with a voice delivering a grunt or a doubtful line or a metaphor to continue on is all the horse has known. I suppose the horse is older than the voice. He's been coming from and going to forever, forever. But the mind behind the voice while often at some repose, as I've said, is also restless, thinking the next new thought, or thinking nothing, to say something about it in a manner some would deem beautiful. So in case you don't know, this collection, Rail Splitter, is from the perspective, it's in the voice of Abraham Lincoln after he's been assassinated by John Wilkes Booth. So it's sort of an Abraham Lincoln from the grave, a ghostly Abraham Lincoln. Through this perspective, through this voice, through this sort of narrative conceit, I suppose, Morris Manning reflects on the history of the American South, uh, leadership, um, war, um, parenting, uh, being someone's son. And of course, also, as you see here, the art of poetry. And one of the things I love about this collection is how it's so sort of thoughtful, contemplative, whatever word you want to use. Um, it's got this sort of slow pace. The, the, the lines themselves force you to slow down. Um, you might remember that I got to interview Morris Manning recently. And if you subscribe to our magazine, Forma, formajournal.com for my interview with him, you, you'll see, uh, you'll hear him talk about how for him, there's a speech matters a lot. The form of speech, the way people speak matters a lot. And he himself speaks deliberately. Um, I don't want to say slowly because that sounds pejorative, but you know, it, there's a deliberateness to the way he speaks. And that comes across in his poetry as well. And that's one of the things that makes it thoughtful. The lines have a deliberateness to them. And so when he jumps into a metaphor, uh, midway through a poem, you sit up, you know, for the first part of the poem, it's sort of a reflection of what it's like being in, you know, the afterlife. There's something like, you know, kind of like uh, Dante here or even Odysseus in the underworld from the Odyssey. You know, those are uh, characters that come to mind. But then about halfway through the poem, we get a period and then one line, poetry speaks about the unspeakable. So that's like a capstone of the first half where he's reflecting about the afterlife, I suppose, and his own, his own mind. And then the second half of the poem at that point continues on. We get a new sentence. It's a clanking wagon load of paradox pulled by a horse across a vast land in utter darkness. And then he continues on with that. So when you when you get to that second half of the poem and all of a sudden we're given this very deliberate, very specific metaphor, as I said, it makes you sit up, it makes you take stock. And and I, I don't really want to talk about what everything about that metaphor because it's one that if you let it linger with you is really interesting to think about. 
So when I read it again, you know, hopefully you can sort of listen to what he's doing and maybe compare it to the first half and the themes that are being presented in the first half of the poem. What I like is that, you know, some poems are going to jump around from metaphor to metaphor, image to image. But this second half of the poem is so, stays so consistently and persistently with this wagon load and the horse metaphor that it makes the poem very specific and um, very, um, I was going to say original. That kind of goes without saying, I guess. But the specificity, um, the, there's a tactile nature to it. That The specificity of that one image is takes the profundity of the poem up another level, I think. You know, it's not just about the ideas anymore. It's about ideas embodied in real things that can be experienced, seen, touched, felt, heard, all those sorts of things. Even if it's in our imagination because we're not around wagon loads and horses very often. But I just, that's what I love about this book is this is the kind of thing you see throughout it. So once more, here is The Art of Poetry by Morris Manning. Everything changes. Even alone as I am in this strange eternity, my mind is restless. And yet I also live with a kind of peace. To say I also live even though I am dead is funny. I have to humor myself down here, or up here, whatever adverb designates this realm. Let's call it the realm of the voice and the mind. And as the mind changes, so must the voice. But the voice eventually ceases to be distinct and therefore becomes itself. I don't know how that happens. It just becomes a common voice, a voice that anyone hearing it would know. Ideally, the voice will say something worth saying, or better, say something without having to say it. Poetry speaks about the unspeakable. It's a clanking wagon load of paradox pulled by a horse across a vast land in utter darkness, and the voice without a body guides the horse. Nothing about this arrangement seems to bother the horse. Pulling the squeaking wagon load of paradox through the darkness with a voice delivering a grunt or a doubtful line or a metaphor to continue on is all the horse has known. I suppose the horse is older than the voice. He's been coming from and going to forever, forever. But the mind behind the voice, while often at some repose, as I have said, is also restless, thinking the next new thought, or thinking nothing, to say something about it in a manner some would deem beautiful. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. We'll be back tomorrow with another poem for you. 